You're watching Power Nation. They say time is money, and sometimes it makes sense to spend a little more money at the start of an engine build to save some time later. Today on Engine Power, we take a remanufactured LQ9 and give it plenty of extra horsepower. Welcome to Engine Power. When you're searching for an engine for your hot rod or project, you always have to start with a used one or find one, and that involves tearing it down, hoping it's good, having the machine work done, and then building it or paying someone else to build it for you. But there's an alternative, and that is a remanufactured engine like we got today. We got this one from Power Torque through O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, inside our crate is a 6-liter LS with an LQ9 designation. Now, that engine was used in Cadillacs and GM trucks. This is an extremely versatile power plant, either in its stock form or put some go-fast parts on it. The key to that is the quality of the remanufacturing process, which makes this engine a great candidate for mods. To keep up with the demand for high-quality remanufactured LS engines, Power Torque has a production line dedicated to building only LS platforms. There are over 150 processes involved during remanufacturing. After incoming cores are disassembled, they are heavily cleaned and thoroughly inspected. They are magnafluxed and pressure checked. The gasket surfaces on cylinder heads are refinished to ensure proper sealing. The block is aligned line to make sure the main housing bores are round and straight. It is rough bored, final honed, and resurfaced using precision CNC equipment. Throughout remanufacturing, everything is continually inspected for quality control. Then the block is final cleaned and painted. The camshaft is installed and the crankshaft is ground and polished for proper sizing and a like new finish. Then it's accurately torqued down using calibrated automatic torque wrenches. New OE replacement oversized pistons receive new ring sets and are installed by hand. The cylinder heads are machined with a three angle valve job and the head is decked for flatness and surface finish. The heads are assembled with all new components and vacuum tested for a good valve seal. After the engines are assembled, they are run tested to check oil pressure and compression. Power Torque offers a three year unlimited mileage warranty on their engines. Ready? Yep. It's all you. Look at that. It's all cinched down. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, this is the way you should get them. It makes it way easier. Um, yeah. Pans already on them, valve covers, timing cover, it's got the rear cover, it's got the oil pan. Oh yeah. Valley covers on. Reason that's nice is one, you don't have to source any of them. Two, they're already clean and it's ready, it's ready to go. Yeah. If you're just using this engine in its stock state, which obviously we're gonna do first, mm -hmm. this is the advantage of that. The big deal about this is uh, on the front end of it, it's, it is a little bit more pricey but you do not have to worry about sourcing your pans. You don't have to worry about making sure everything fits. One, I hate waiting, especially when you're tearing something down, and you're like, oh my God, is this thing good or not? So we know at this point, everything is ready to rock and roll. Yeah, everything's been machined, everything's been checked, like you just mentioned. You don't have to wait for it while it's at the machine shop. You can just get it, put your ancillary parts on it, and have a running engine. Speaking of ancillary parts, let's get this up. And I don't even think we should put it on an engine stand. Let's just put it right on the run stand. Yeah. And then we'll put the rest of the stuff on from there. So Heck yeah. we get the Let's hoist. To mount this engine on our dyno cart, we'll be using some LS swap engine mount brackets from Holly. This puts the mounts in the same location as a conventional small block Chevy. Our dyno flywheel is an SFI approved billet steel unit because safety is first. It gets torqued to 85 pound-feet. Our LS is pretty much complete, but there are a few parts we need to go ahead and finish it out. And for those, we turn to O'Reilly Auto Parts because they have a variety of OE replacement parts that are high quality and they're gonna work great in our application. This includes things like spark plug wires, coil packs, spark plugs, sensors, harmonic balancers, oil filters, oil, and even harder to get things like oil fill caps, oil dipstick tubes, and steam vent lines. 
O'Reilly Auto Parts also has a selection of aftermarket parts available through them, and we're going to be using some of those on the induction side of our engine. Our application calls for a carburetor, and that helps keep things simple. So to do that, we're going to be using this Edelbrock intake manifold kit. It comes with a Performer RPM intake with a 4150 flange and an MSD LS ignition control module so we can control timing on the dyno. We also got a set of Holly EFI coil harnesses and to top it off, we got a Holly EXP 750 CFM carburetor. Now this is really convenient because O'Reilly Auto Parts is pretty much a one-stop shop for everything we need, whether it's a stock component or a high performance one. We'll go ahead and get most of this installed, make a few baseline runs on the dyno, and then we have some racier parts that we got from them that we can put on and see if it picks up any power. Up next, we take care of the top end and make a baseline run on the LQ9. Assembly begins with a Dorman OE replacement balancer. A stock torque to yield balancer bolt torques to 37 pound feet and then it's turned 140 degrees. Come on. Oh, Jeez. Just need that little bit of extra angle there. Need to eat more ho hos. We'll install our oil pressure adapter fitting for the dyno and a new standard ignition cam sensor. We'll also drop in a new OE replacement crankshaft sensor. We pre-assembled our induction system on the bench so it goes on as one easy piece. We use the recommended intake manifold O-ring set so it will seal up nice and tight. So you know like uh, when we calculate compression ratio and find the volume of a cylinder, you use pi r square? Yeah. No, silly. Pi aren't square, pi are round. Cobbler or square. How did I know that was coming? Next, we bolt down a set of Dorman steam vent lines, a necessity on every LS build. We'll set our spark plug gap to 40 on our NGK TR6 plugs. A little bit of anti-seize on the threads keeps them from galling. We're using OEM coil brackets to hold down our new Blue Streak ignition coils. We'll go ahead and plug in our Holly coil harness and our MSD sensor harness. A set of ARP header studs holds on the LS dyno headers. A MicroGuard Select oil filter finishes everything out. Plug and play doesn't get much simpler than this. We are completely stock short block, nice bolt-ons. Because this is a carbureted application, that's why that's on there, so. Uh, yeah, and I think that keeps things, like you said, simple, but I think that's a huge benefit because these engines are already robust. You know, the, the short block and long block is really robust. <laughs> like a dream, Woo! like a dream. Like a dream. Yeah. Stock that's, like engines like this, they're they're glass smooth. You yeah, know? and that that's that carburetor out of the box. We haven't even touched it yet, that so that's a, like super nice. That's an out of the box carburetor yeah. that I don't even I haven't even touched the idle yet. So <laughs> it's yeah. it's fun seeing that uh, power torque remanufactured LQ9 completely stock long block. That's Come, what it is, and it, it doesn't get any more completely stock than this. It's, yeah. it, this has a 317 cylinder head, which is a good head. I've actually flowed them, yeah. and they flow about what an aftermarket an aluminum head for a conventional small block like a 350 Chevy yeah. these actually flow as much as a, uh, you know uh, as one of those yeah. what timing is in that box that has several pre-programmed timing curves what is it on right now yeah well they give you this handy dandy screwdriver so i put it on truck truck cuz it's a truck engine it so it is a truck engine i put it on truck and we'll see what it makes on the truck tune um, i think total timing in that is somewhere around right above 20 i think Right there, 370.8. Yeah, and 
four thirty two point six point six point six. So okay, so point six. On this is that's that's one horse per cube. Basically. Yeah, which is really good for a stock engine. Yeah, it's very good. But so, uh, but that might be something where we can uh, improve on it yeah. a little bit. Well, I'm just sitting here letting it idle. We're gonna shut her down. <laughs> let's, let's get, get to it. Uh, let's get to her. Up next, we'll show you a quick and almost foolproof way to change the camshaft on the LQ9. And later, it gets put to the test again in our dyno cell. Welcome back to our LQ9 upgrade. The camshaft swap is relatively easy on the LS platform due to the O-ring gaskets and thoughtful engineering. Dropping the pan is a necessity to remove the oil pump pickup tube before removing the oil pump itself. No big deal. To avoid a giant mess, we'll drain the oil pan the easy way after it comes off. While Frankie's working on the front of the engine, I'll start working on removing the valve train. We're almost ready to pull the old camshaft out of our engine, but before we do that, we need to keep the lifters out of the way, and we're going to show you how to do that. It's simply turn the engine over. What that's going to do is the camshaft is going to push the lifters to the top of their travel, and then the lifter trays are going to hold them in place. That'll give us enough room to slip the stock camshaft out and our new one in. We've already got a bolt in our crankshaft snout to turn it over, so we'll give her a few turns. And you can see the push rod come up and it stays up, which is a great way to confirm that the lifter is at the top of its travel still. Now you have to turn the engine over at least two rotations to make sure every cylinder goes through its complete cycle for this to work. Now this is kind of a risky maneuver because you run the risk of dropping a lifter inside the engine. Sometimes the trays do not have enough tension to hold the lifter up, and when that happens, you can be removing the camshaft, bump one of the lifters, and it will fall into the pan. In our case, it will hit the floor, and that's okay. But either way, you will have to pull the cylinder heads to get it back in, and we're not gonna hopefully do that. So uh, we're gonna see what happens as Frankie does it. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. You gotta kind of twist it on yep. the way out. Does it help with me standing here like this? Okay. Let's have a look, see. Yeah, check that real quick. All right, get the other one in there like immediately. As Frankie very carefully installs the new camshaft, let's take a look at the specs. This is a catalog grind by comp that has 231 degrees of intake duration and 239 degrees of exhaust duration at 50 thousandths lift. It also has 617 thousandths of lift on the intake and 624 on the exhaust with a 113 degree lobe separation angle. I think you did it. I think we're good. <laughs> I didn't hear any clunks. Well, now we're gonna test it. To make sure everything went smoothly, we'll push down each lifter with a push rod. For better protection on the camshaft, we'll install a new Comp Cam's bronze camshaft retaining plate. As usual, no camshaft gets installed without being degreed. Ours comes in at 109 degrees of intake centerline, which is four degrees advanced. With a new cam installed and degreed, it's time to upgrade the rest of our valve train. Now, with our lift, we need to do something with the rocker arm, and we could do that with the stock one. We could replace the trunnion, put a kit in it, meaning press the bearing out of here and replace it with a bearing that allows more rocker arm travel that will be safe with our increased lift. But we decided to go the extra mile and a few extra bucks and upgrade to a shaft system from Comp. This Comp Cam's shaft system utilizes a stock style rocker body, but they are all on a common shaft and it bolts right down to the stock stand. Not only does it increase rigidity, it increases valve train accuracy. Along with that, we are upgrading the valve springs. We are going to a dual spring. They have a higher seat and open pressure and have a higher rate that controls valve motion at higher RPMs. Along with that, we have new steel retainers, ID locators, and machine locks. 
And where do we source all of these new spiffy things? Well, you guessed it, through O'Reilly Auto Parts. They can not only provide you with parts for your OEM ride, but they can get you hot rod parts as well. And we are going to start by getting our new springs on the engine. To change the valve springs, we need to pressurize the cylinder with air, and we'll use our Matco Leak Down Tester. Like the name implies, this on-head valve spring compressor makes it easy to change two springs at once, with the head still on the engine. The old seals have to come out because the ID locators are used to accurately locate the double spring. Next, we drop in new seals, followed by the springs and retainers. New machine locks come next, and the compressor is removed. The new Comp Chrome Molly stock length push rods receive extreme pressure lube and slide into place. When installing shaft systems, it's important to go slow and tighten evenly to avoid stripping the threads or binding the shaft. With all the bolts drawn down, they are torqued to 22 pound-feet and will apply some valve train assembly spray. Up next, we get our power plant dialed into perfection and find out just what it can do in the dyno cell. We're almost ready to dyno with just a few components left to install, starting with our oil pump. It's shimmed with three one and a half thousandths feeler gauges to assure correct gear alignment during assembly. After sealing up the bottom end, we'll reinstall our new coils we got from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's a couple of tips. Number one, always use a balancer installer, not a hammer. Number two, never reuse a torque to yield fastener. It's made for one use only so we are installing a new Dorman bolt. Even though our engine only has a few dyno runs on it, we'll put in five quarts of fresh Syntec 10W30. We're doing the exact same thing yeah. for right now. Just do a straight comparison. This is a straight comparison. Timing's timing still the same. Timing is still yep. the same. The only thing we have actually changed, what have we changed? Camshaft, push rods, rockers, springs. Turn a higher. Now. Yeah, it was still going up, but After that's very Woo, nice. Look at that right Dang. there. 435 horse. Yeah. At 5,500. It's still going. We're gonna turn it higher because it's still going. Still up going, there, but yeah. 450 pound feet at 4,400. It's making more torque everywhere, so that's a huge yeah. improvement. Yeah, it's it's it. Uh, I mean, cams are cams are amazing, right? Because <laughs> they uh, they seem to have the biggest gain. You know, for, for the most part. Yeah, so, for money, yeah. Let's move the entire range up. Yeah. So let's go like 3,000 to uh, 6,000. Yeah. Seven four fifty. Yeah, right at six thousand. Yep. We're at one twenty two per per cube on power That's and one twenty one on torque. What does it have in it for timing? Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I put it on the truck tune because we had it as a truck engine, stock truck engine. Sure. So um, okay. I'm sure it's something around twenty two ish. Okay. So go, uh, uh, put I mean, and this sounds like a big jump. Go put like twenty six degrees of timing. Okay, yeah. There's some custom tunes on there, so I can go do, ahead do, and put do, it at 26. Do so. custom at 26. Okay. Oh, wow. I think it uh, snuck up a 
snuck a little more in there. 457.9 yep. at 6,000. 6, Still going up. Yep. 449.8 pound feet. I'm gonna go ahead and call that 450. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna bump this up 500. So we're gonna okay. 6,500. carries 456.5, yeah. 451 pound feet. And still at 6,500, it's still making 454 horsepower. You put two more in it, and if it, if it kills it, it kills it. If not, it's not killing it like it's gonna like but not, vaporize. But not gaining power, it, yeah. It'll, it'll stop gaining power. You, you time for torque, and you jet for horsepower. Expecting that big of a jump. That's pretty cool. 464 for horse power. Yep. 457 for torque. Now, noticeably wow. cresting over now, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Not much, but uh, that's about the, no, the that's end still of it. Nice though. Everything yep. sourced from O'Reilly. Yep. You know, exactly. you know, the, the great thing is uh, O'Reilly's like a one-stop shop. If you don't want to mess around with a nasty core, getting a machine, hopefully it's good, and then sourcing parts from a whole bunch of other places, yeah. you can literally go to O'Reilly Auto Parts, get this long block, get that manifold kit, yep. get that camshaft, exactly. build this exact combination. This is a dyno verified 464, 457. So. Exactly. For more cool content like this, go check out PowerNationTV.com. <laughs>